This is David. We are continuing our conversation on Azure Key Vaults, and today I'm going to show you how to access an Azure Key Vault secret from a, uh, a custom application, a custom .NET application. There's a few st setup steps we need to do before we can write our application code, and I've listed them here. First thing is to create a, an Azure Key Vault. Then we want to register an application to use the Key Vault. We do that with an Act Azure Active Directory. We'll add a client secret within that app registration. And then we will go back into Key Vault and add an access policy to give that app registration permission to the Key Vault and tell it what kind of permissions it's allowed to have. Uh, and then we're going to write our code. And the code we're going to write, we'll use some environment variables. So we'll have to set those first. Step one, we've already done in a previous video, number 130. Go to aka.ms slash gcast. You can find it here. It'll show you just about five and a half minutes if you're not sure how to create a Key Vault that walks you through the process. So let's do this. The next step, register the application with Azure Active Directory. So if we look at this key vault right here, we can find it in our Azure portal. Uh, it's right there, but if I didn't know, if I wasn't sure of the name of it, I could just search for key vaults and find it. And there it is right there. Um, and uh, what I want to do, let me bring up the portal on another tab here. What I want to do is to register this application. I can do that in Azure Active Directory, which I do get to from clicking on this left menu. If you don't see it there, just search for Azure Active Directory right here, and here it is. And the blade I'm interested in is this one, App Registrations, right here. Open up App Registrations and click on the New Registration tab. And from here, I like to say, um, to give it a name, like you know, this, I'd like to include the name of the app that I'm registering, or the thing that I'm registering, which in this case is GCast KV. That's the name of the key vault. And I'll say app reg, something like that. Just give it an idea that I can look at that and have a clue as to what it is. It can be as detailed as you want. A support of the account types. For this one, I only want to give access to uh, accounts inside of this single Active Directory tenant, but I can do uh, other tenants as well. I can have single sign out Skype and Xbox or other Microsoft accounts, Hotmail accounts, things like that. I'll leave the default here. Uh, if I'm building a web app, which I'm not, um, I could tell it after you authenticate, redirect the user back to a page within the website, maybe the, the main page, maybe the profile page, something like that. Uh, I'm not doing that here. And also, uh, I can I can always configure these later if I want to. So I'll just take all the defaults. Click on register. It just takes a few seconds and it will register this application. There it is. It's ready to go. Right here. Let's go back to our list of things to do. Let's add a client secret to the app registration, and that is done in here under certificates and secrets. I want to add a new client secret, and I'll just say client secret for GCast KV. That's my key vault. Um, I want to renew every six months. I'll click on add right here, and again, it just takes a few seconds to do this. Now it's done. And it appears down on this list right here. This is going to be your only chance to save this value. This value right here is going to be important. So I'll click on this to copy it to my clipboard. Then I'll come back over here. And I'll save it like that. Um, it's kind of hard to read there, but it's not a one line, but that's that's my client secret. Um, the other things I'll probably want here up here are the, this client ID on the overview tab of the app registration. Let's grab that as well. Come back down here. I'll just take some notes of client ID. It's that right here. And I'll want this tenant ID also. Tenant ID here as well. I better save those things. All right, so we've done this, these first three steps. Let's add an access policy to the key vault that gives permission to this app registration. We do that in the key vault, which I brought up over here. And you see that there's a button down here called Access Policies. If I click on that, 
then I have one access policy. It's got my name on it because I'm the one that created this. And you can see that it gives permissions for encryption keys. All of these things were created by default. I don't have the options to encrypt and decrypt, although I could give myself those permissions. For secrets, I can get list set, delete, backup, restore. By default, purge wasn't there. I checked it and added it later on. And then for certificates, all these things are selected. So you can manage that for this. But when an application runs, it's not going to run as me. It's going to run as a, a, a principle that's created by that application registration. Uh, so that's what I need to do. I need to add an access policy like this. And the policy tells, if I go back here, it tells it which of these permissions to set. And it also tells it who is the user. The user can be a, an account. It can be a uh, or an application or a service or anything like that. So let's let's do that. Let's first of all, if you select this, there are some templates here. If I want to do just secret management, you can see it just selects all of these secret things, but none of the keys or the certificates. I'm going to do that. And in fact, I'm going to give it one more with the purge permission as well. Just give it everything for this. I click on add, and then oops, I'm not clicking on add. Excuse me. I'll click on the select principle. I have to give it at least one principle. So I'll do this, and what I want to do is I want to give it. This principle right here, GCAS, this right here. Copy that. Here, bring it up and select that right here. That will be the principle. And now I will click on add. And now you see that it's added. And you must, this is easy to forget, you must click save. If I navigate away from the page without clicking save, then uh, it won't work. You can lose all my changes. So now I've said, this application registration has permission to do everything to the secrets, but nothing to the keys or the certificates. And you can see over here that there are no secrets at all. It's, it's empty right now. But I have permissions. I get a permission to, for example, set a new secret, should add or update the existing secret. Once I have that, I can get it. It's okay. it's all right. So now we've got that. Let's go back to our list right here. We did number four. And we're, now we want to start writing the code. But the code actually requires some environment variables. I'll bring up my Visual Studio instance here. This. The reason that I need environment variables is because in my code, I am doing this default Azure credentials. I'm just creating that, and that reads from environment variables. So I'll, I'll walk through that code in a second, but the very first thing I want to do is to go to my environment variables here, and I will set these three things, Azure Client ID, Azure Client Secret, and Azure Tenant ID. Those are all really important to this default Azure credential. It will get read by that. So let me change those things here. And luckily I saved them in this document here. Uh, this document here. Um, so the client ID will be this right here. Edit that, change it there, okay. The client secret is this right here. Set that, give me that A right there. Okay. And the tenant ID is right here. Okay. 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 Now I've set these and I have, I really need to restart Visual Studio. And the reason is it's going to read those environment variables on startup. I want to make sure I just change them. So I launched Visual Studio one more time. Bring that up here. Let me walk you through this code right here. Got a key vault name. Tell the name of my key vault, which is GCast KV. Paste it right there. And so the key vault URI will be https colon whack whack gcast kv dot vault dot azure dot net. Uh, I want to create this client secret right here, and then I'll assign it right here. Set the default Azure credentials, which will read those three environment variables. Um, and then I'll create this secret client. The secret client object 
actually have. It knows about the Azure Key Vault, where it is. It runs under these credentials, Persepolis environment variables, and we've given those uh, principles within the app registration. We've given them permission to do all these things with secrets, but nothing with certificates or keys in Azure Key Vault. So the secret client has methods like secret client dot uh, get secret or this so it's actually get uh, the deleted secrets or set secret or delete is it start delete secret things like this all these methods that have to do with managing your secrets uh, let's run through them here list all secrets here this method right here if i go down to it you can see that it uses secret got get properties of secrets that return a list of all of the secrets all the secrets that are not deleted and then i can loop through those and just output the name of each secret and the value of each secret and the content type of each secret i can go through and see what they're right now there aren't any secrets here in fact let me go back to the key vault and click on click on secrets you can see there's nothing in here why don't i add one manually this way just say who and give it a value of bar content type of demo that's fine and click create and now it's in here so if i run this application it should show me that one secret but before i do that oops, let's go back over to here before i do that it's going to output that the secret name the secret value and the properties but here before that walk the rest of this code here now I want to say, ask prompt the user for the name of a, a secret, a new secret name that you're going to create. And it'll read that, make sure that it, you didn't leave it as blank. You press enter, it'll skip this whole section here. And then, so I'll read it into this variable here. Oh, let's get that twice here. I really need that. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the name of the secret. This is the value of the secret right here. I'll make, set that. And then I'll use that secret client as a set secret async. Just give it the name and the value, and that's it. It's asynchronous, so I'll use an awaiter here. So this won't happen. This won't be output until uh, it's actually finished setting it. Um, and then I want to set the content type of it, where I just said demo type. Uh, I go over in another video, I show you some information about how secrets work. but. I can set it here, and then when I'm done, I list all secrets. You should see one more secret. Uh, the next one is I want to delete a secret. So I say, hey, what's the name of the secret I want to delete? And if I enter that name, then the secret client has a start delete secret. And start delete secret is just what it says. It starts, kicks off the deletion process, but it may take 30 seconds or so for it actually to be deleted. So the way I've handled that is I just have a little while loop here, sleep for one second, and uh, write it out a dot. And I wait. I'm always testing this operation. So when I call start delete secret, it returns an operation object. And then I check that operation object. It has a property called has completed. Once it's completed, then I know that it's deleted and I tell you so. Right. That is a soft delete. And what a soft delete means is that it's not really, really deleted. I could actually recover it later on um, until it gets purged or until it automatically purges, which by default is after 90 days. I do have some code here to permanently delete that secret. And the permanently delete the secret does exactly the same thing. It asks you for the name of the secret to that you want to purge. And then it does this code is just the same as above. It does the start delete secret and waits the 30 seconds or so, whatever, when, until this operation has completed the set is true. And once that's done, then the secret client has a purge deleted secret and that will permanently get rid of it. So it won't be there anymore. All right. And after every step, I do list all the secrets that are there. All right. Let me run this thing just to show it in action. If I've done everything correctly. Then first thing it should do.
didn't like the URI, so let's troubleshoot this. The URI is gcastkv.vault, and the reason is because I have a space in there. Right. right here, kill that, and run it. Notice, by the way, I have, if I want to see extra logging, it wasn't, I can uncomment this line, not a whole lot of logging to it. Hopefully, that will come to that. So I'll run that. And right now I have one secret in there, foo bar, value of foo, name of foo, value of bar, uh, content type is demo. And if I wanted another one here, I could say S1, it will be the name of the secret, and the value of the secret will be A, 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 that's fine. And it sets to A, A. Now I have two secrets, foo and S1 right here. Uh, if I want to delete one of them, I'm going to delete foo right here. And it waits a few seconds to do that. And once it's done, I'm going to show you here. Let me go over to secrets and refresh this. You see. There's S1 and Foo right now. It's still deleting Foo. It kicked it off to the beginning, and now it shows only one of the, if I refresh this over here, it's still a little slow to catch up. You should see Foo is gone, only S1 exists. And because it was a soft delete, if I say manage deleted secrets, I can see it over there. There's two. It's over here. It's I could recover if I wanted to. We go back to the code and input a secret name to permanently delete. Now I'm going to permanently delete S1 right here. And this is going to do the same thing. It's going to soft delete S1, but when it's done, it's actually going to purge S1 as well. So when I'm done, there should be no secrets left. There it is, it's deleted. And if I go manage deleted secrets, you'll see that S1 didn't appear in here. Close this and refresh it. It's gone from here. That one is permanently gone. Whereas S1, it's there. I could either purge it or I could recover it like this. And just like uh, deleting, it takes a finite amount of time. So it may take about 30 seconds to show up in here. But we have this option here. Now, if you want to see this code, Close that. Actually, I've made it available in my GitHub repository. Um, all this code right here, and you can find it at github.com slash my name, David Giard, right here under repositories. You'll see Azure Key Vault demo right here. So that you are right there, github.com slash my name, David Giard slash Azure Key Vault demo. Then you can see this. It's a brief description of what it does, and all the code is here in program.cs. You will have to set the environment variables, and you'll have to change this ID to your Key Vault name. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.